Welcome to video number five in using iTrain. My name is Bob. In the previous video we created two new locomotives and then moved them manually using the iTrain throttles. This was great fun but we had no control of our turnouts and we had to rely on the hand of God to help us out. There must be a better way. So here we are again. I've started iTrain and I've opened the tutorial that we saved from the last video which was TUT04 and I have assigned the two locomotives that we created to the two throttles on the locomotive tabs down here. What we want to do is create a new clean switchboard and then draw our track layout on it and use the switchboard to control the turnouts. But I also want to retain the two locomotives that we created and I also want to retain the trains from the demo layout because I think they may be useful in future tutorials. And to achieve all that we will simply use the new button icon in the top left hand corner here. So we click on it, it says are you sure you want a new project? We will say yes. And then it says do you want to keep the locomotives and trains? Well in this circumstance we do, so we will say yes. And here we are, we now have a clean switchboard and we've retained the locomotives and the trains. If you look down in the bottom right hand corner here, you'll see that the command station that we created is still available. And if we go up to the edit menu and look at the settings, we'll see that the settings have remained unchanged as well. We're still in the OO scale. And the same for the preferences, that hasn't changed either. So we're all set. We now want to edit the switchboard, so we go up to the edit menu and then down to the switchboard, or we could have typed Control F4. We're presented with a new name for the, uh, for the switchboard. It defaults to the name main, which is OK with me, so I will keep that. And then here we are in the switchboard editor. Now the editor has too much to cover in just one video, so I will produce a follow-on video which goes into more detail about using the switchboard editor. Right, so let's first have a look at what we want to draw. This is a diagram of the test track that I have built for these iTrain tutorials. And I have shown the DCC hardware that I'm using and how it is all hooked up. Leave me a comment if you'd like to see a video about uh, creating the test track and putting in the hardware here. For this tutorial, we're just going to focus on this section down here with the sidings and the four turnouts. So this is what we will reproduce in the switchboard. The main line going through the center, I will also terminate at both ends to uh, simplify the tutorial as well. Now we will enlarge the grid space. So we'll go up to the ruler at the top here. And at the end of the ruler, we will click and hold the left mouse button and then drag across the screen to produce some more columns. And I'll drag it out to around uh, 50 squares. And then we can do the same on the vertical ruler. So I'll come down to the bottom of the ruler, click and hold, 
and drag this down to around 30 squares. It doesn't really matter what the size is. Next we will create the main line which we will draw right across the screen. So I will go up to the straight track element here, click on it so that it is highlighted in blue and then I will use the T key on the keyboard to rotate it clockwise. So I'm pressing it once, twice and now I can come down onto the switchboard again, click on one of the squares with the mouse button and then press the space bar to enter the piece of track. And there we have it. And we can also do it a quicker way by clicking the left mouse button, holding and dragging all the way across the screen. And then because this is still highlighted, we can then press the space bar and we have the line all the way across. Then we can do the same for the two sidings that are down here. So I will click, hold the left mouse button and then I'm going to draw across two rows this time and then press the space bar. And then for the two this side, I'll click, drag it across the two rows and press the space bar. Now click anywhere on the grid to remove the multiple selection that we had. Next we'll draw the two left hand turnouts on the main line here. So we'll go up to the left hand turnout, click on it so that it's highlighted. Then I'll use the T key to rotate it clockwise and then come down onto the square, click on it press the space bar so it's then entered. And then I can use the cursor key to move to the left and then I can press the space bar again and insert the left hand turnout. And now I can use the R key to rotate this around on the switchboard to the correct orientation. And next we will insert the right hand turnouts. So I will click on that and I will rotate it this time with the T to go clockwise. Then come down to the square where I want it to go, click on it, press the space bar and we're done. And then we can move to the other location, press the space bar and this time we'll rotate it on the switchboard so I'll use either the R or the T again to rotate it around. Let's do the curves next. There are two types that we could choose from. The uh, tight curve or the wider curve. I think we'll choose the wide curve in this instance. So I'll click on it and then rotate it so it will fit this location here once, twice, then I can come down, click on there, press the space button and it's in. And then we'll come down to this location, click on it, press the space bar and then use the rotation keys to align it again. The last bit of drawing that we need to do is to insert the buffers at the end of the siding. So we'll go up to the buffer tool, click on it to select it, then use the R key to rotate, then go over to the switchboard, click and then space, click, space, click, space, and then we can go back onto the toolbar, select it, press the T key, rotate it around, back onto the switch board, click, space, click, space, click, space. And there we are. That's all the drawing done at this stage. So now we need to name each of the turnouts and give them a DCC address. So to do that we just double click on the turnout and that will bring up the properties window. 
We'll firstly give it a name. I call mine S1 for switch 1. It's good practice to give it a description that will help you locate it on the layout, but I'm going to skip that. iTrain has automatically identified this turnout as a left-hand turnout. The initial state is the normal state of the turnout when it is turned on. In my case, it is straight on, but you could also, of course, choose the branch option. I'll put it to straight. The interface is our command station, which is the DR5000. Output device we'll leave at default and the address is a single address. Uh, there are other options depending on what accessories you have. And the address is address 1. I know that because that is the DCC address that I have assigned to this particular turnout. Now for this tutorial, that is all that iTrain needs to be able to operate the turnout when we click on it on the switchboard. We will use these other tabs when we get to running trains automatically and using routes. So all we need to do now is to enter it by clicking the OK button. And then you'll see up in the browser here under the Accessory tab that we now have Turnout S1 with a DCC address of 1. And then we simply repeat that for the other three turnouts. And this time we can go through a little quicker. So we can call this S2. It's a right hand turnout. Default is initial state straight. We change the command station. That's left at default. And we give it an address of 2. And then press OK. And then for the third turnout, S3, change the interface, give it an address of 3, press OK, and the fourth one, S4, DR5000, and an address of 4, and OK. Right, so at this stage, nothing has actually been applied or saved in iTrain. If I was to press the Cancel button now, we would quit out of the editor and the switchboard on the main panel would still be blank. Let me just show you. I collapse the window down slightly, so you're seeing the main switchboard window here and nothing is in the window at the moment. So if I cancelled we would still have nothing there. So what we need to do is to apply these changes. Um, so you simply do that by pressing the apply button here and there you see that the switchboard now appears on the main page. Then we can press the OK key to exit the switchboard. And now if we go over to the switchboard and click on the turnouts, we should see them changing on the switchboard here. If you hover their mouse over the turnout, you'll see the turnout name and in brackets is the DCC address. So things seem to be working on the switchboard here, but are they working on the layout itself? Let's check that. Right, the command station is powered on, so I will press the connect key and I can see that the green track power light has come on on my command station, so I know the connection is good. So let's operate the turnout. We'll click on S1 here. And there we go. And back again. Perfect. 
So let's try moving some of the locomotives. I've got the class 33 in this siding and the class 73 in this siding. And we'll move the 33 from here into this siding up here. So let's select that turnout and this one and that one and then that should be good. So I'll give her some throttle and away she goes. Across turnout two, turnout one and three and four and then into the siding. How cool was that? Hey! <laughs> now we'll move this 73 from here over to this siding. So we'll click on this turnout here and then this one there. Then we'll give her some throttle. And away she goes. Across the turnouts and then hopefully into the siding. Yes, brilliant. Hey, well, that was very satisfying, but we want more, don't we? It would be nice if we had some form of visual indication of where the trains or locos were on the switchboard here. And it would be really nice if we could automate the traffic. Both of those things can be achieved with the aid of blocks and feedback sensors. And that will be the subject of the next tutorial video. In the meantime, however, I will produce a follow on video to this tutorial, which will be about the switchboard and will include hints and tips and do's and don'ts for the switchboard. Until then, thanks for watching.